Rules and Regulations 1. Charles Orson Well, of course, I started in Hollywood right in the middle of the Hayes office days. And, you know, we had to show them scripts before we started filming. I'm not sure how carefully they looked at them, but it was a good thing for us. You see, it's pretty expensive to film a five-minute scene which you later have to throw away because of one wrong word. It was much easier to discuss it beforehand. Sometimes it was pretty absurd. I remember a script in, oh, uh, 48 or 49, where the Hayes office sent it back and said, You can't use this. There are three dams, two hells, and one blast in this scene. We got back to them and said something like, It's essential to the story. So they say, Okay, but you'll have to cut it down a bit. You can have two dams, one hell, and scrap the blast. I thought that was pretty silly. I mean, either it's wrong or it isn't. Mind you, some of the things they said were sensible. You weren't allowed to show how to pick a lock, and you weren't allowed to show how to kill yourself, for example. No, we often laughed at them. Censors are never popular, but the code gave us a discipline. I mean, some beautiful images came on to film because of it. You were forbidden to show something on screen, so you'd have to use a, an image instead. Butterflies whirling round or waves on a beach. You know the kind of thing. Nowadays, it's all too direct, too obvious. Well, there's no mystery left in the cinema. I was against censorship all my life. But when I see some of the stuff little kids are watching... I think maybe it's gone too far in the other direction. I mean, y you have to draw the line somewhere. You really do. 2. Bourne Hall Julie is a new student at Wessex University. She's just arrived at her hall of residence, Bourne Hall. She's talking to Tricia, a second-year student. Hi, I'm Trisha Lambert. I think we're going to be neighbours. Oh, hello. I'm Julie Morgan. Yes, I suppose we are. Are you new here? Yes. I've just been looking at these regulations. I don't suppose it was worth bringing my cassette player. Oh, why not? Everybody's got one. Oh, I see. You've been reading the rules. Well, look, Julie, it's a matter of common sense. Nobody's going to stop you playing it. It's not like that. It's just that you mustn't stop other people working. No, I wouldn't want to do that. I won't play it late. You don't have to worry. All you've got to do is check with the others on this floor. Usually they won't mind a bit of music. But it's not allowed after 11. You're not supposed to play it late, of course. But I'm sure you'll find it's all right sometimes. 3. On the bus. Annette's on a bus. Oi, you can't stand there. Sorry? I said you mustn't stand there, love. You're in a driver's way. Go on, move back. I'm terribly sorry. I didn't realise. But there's no need to be rude about it, is there? Four. On the beach. Come on, Sam. Kick it over here. Come on. Oi, you two lads. Stop that. Stop what? Stop kicking that ball around. It's against the regulations. Eh? What regulations? Can't you read, son? No ball games on the promenade. It's not allowed, see? Why not? We're not doing any harm. It's a regulation, that's why. You can play football on the beach, that's all right. Well, there's no room on the beach. Well, you can't play here. Go on, get a move on. Alas. Hello? Hello, is anybody there? Oh, Lord, my head's splitting. Oh, Mary, there you are. Bring me some coffee. Some black coffee. Oh, you should be in bed, man. That's what the doctor said he did. Bed? How can I sleep with all this going on? Bring the coffee, Mary. Ah, 
This is a surprise. We haven't seen you at breakfast for years. What's happened? Summer sale at the off-license? That's enough. Just like your father, you know. Just like him. But a bit brighter, eh? Just a bit brighter. I sometimes think you're worse. You're not like me. Not at all like me. Thank goodness for that. Hello. Nice to see you up so early. Good morning. Has anybody seen my husband yet? Why? Has he left you? Very funny. No, I just thought he'd be here. He said he was going straight down to breakfast. Perhaps he's run away. Wouldn't be the first time for you, would it? What do you mean? Come on, what are you trying to say exactly? Yes, leave her alone. There's no reason to start on her. Hello, everybody. What's all the fuss about, eh? It's nothing, darling. Just your delightful brother, as usual. Just my sense of humour, that's all. I thought I told you to leave her alone. Do you often have to say that to people? Why, What's I'll... going on here? Can't we have breakfast in peace for once? Sit down, both of you. I won't have squabbling in the house. Well, when I was a lad, I'd done two or three hours' work before breakfast. I didn't get where I am today by squabbling. Where's my scrambled eggs? I've got a meeting at nine o'clock. A meeting? You didn't tell me about a... meeting. He's been having private meetings for years. What's her name? Leave it out. I haven't got the time or the patience. I suppose that layabout isn't up yet. That's no way to talk about him. After all, he is your... Good morning, everyone. Hello, darling. I'm sorry I'm a little late. I couldn't find my eyeliner. Hello, darling. You look splendid. <laughs> By the way, I might be late tonight. Uh, I've got to see somebody. That's all right, my sweet. Uh, milk, dear? Oh, you must let me introduce you to my hairdresser, dear. You've been neglecting yourself since... since... well, you know. <laughs> oh, I am sorry. I did promise not to mention it again. Come on, love. It's nearly a year now. It was his own bloody fault, anyway. There's no need, you oaf. Help everybody. Come quickly. She's in the pool. The swimming pool. I think... I think she's dead. Relay. This is Craig Walton of Southern Radio Sport here at the Intercity Athletics Championship at Wembley Stadium. I just heard that they're ready to begin the draw for one of the week's most popular events, the men's 4x100 metre relay. So we're going over to the committee rooms. Testing, one, two, testing, one, two. Can you hear me? Right. We are going to begin the draw. The first four teams out of the hat will be in the first heat. And they are... South London on the inside track. Brighton. Bristol. And York on the outside. In the second heat... Testing, one, two... I think there's something wrong with this microphone. One, two... Oh, it's, it's, it's OK. <clears throat> we have Exeter on the inside, Newcastle, Dover and Swansea. And in the third heat, we shall have Leeds on the inside, Liverpool... Quiet, please. Quiet! And... <sighs> Which switch? Oh, it's, it's on again. Sorry about that. One, two. Liverpool, Cambridge, and Nottingham. And in the fourth heat... One, two, one, two. The teams will be Oxford on the inside, Glasgow, Birmingham, and finally Manchester. That completes the draw for the... One, two, testing. One, two. Now listen to the heats. One. They're lining up now for the first heat. They're ready. On your marks. Set. 
They're off to a flying start. Waters from South London's taken the lead as they round the bend. Then Gates, Tankard, Bell, Sings taking the baton. Minsters in hot pursuit for York. Then the Bristol boy as they come up to the third stage. And it's Marley for London really moving there and riding. These two are well ahead into the fourth stage. Minder stumbling and the York boy is moving through. Yes, it's Roundtree in front. Then Minder straining to catch him. And that's it. Roundtree of York is first. Minder from South London second. Then Bristol with Brighton at the rear. If you've just joined us, we're at the start of the second heat in the men's 4x100 metres relay. In many ways, this is the weakest heat with none of the favourites in it. They're on the blocks, Exeter in the orange on the inside, then Terry from Newcastle, Castle from Dover, and Llewellyn from Swansea in the green vest. On your marks, set... Oh, something was wrong with the start there. They're going back to the blocks. Very nerve-wracking when that happens. On your marks. Set. Oh, and Castle surging into the lead, going like a rocket. The other three bunched together. And at the baton, it's still Dover. Nothing to choose between the others as they come to the second change. And it's Dover. Well in front in the yellow. More of Exeter making a challenge. Is he moving? Round to the last change. And Ferry's blocking Penburn of Exeter. Penburn can't get through. What is Ferry doing? And at the tape, it's Ferry of Dover from Penburn, Exeter and D.F. Jones of Swansea. And North limping home for Newcastle. Of course, he injured his foot in the hurdles. But wait. Ferry has been disqualified for pushing. What a pity for Dover. After a great race. Three. Well, many would say that this was the strongest heat, perhaps the one most likely to produce the champion team. Cambridge must be the outsiders here, with Liverpool the clear favourites. But you can't write off teams like Leeds and Nottingham, who were so narrowly beaten last year. A sharp of Liverpool is just looking at his shoes. No trouble, I hope, for the Jamaican lad who's run so brilliantly for Liverpool. No, no, they're getting ready. On your marks. Set. And Sharp explodes into the lead with Clough just behind him and Lomax pounds ahead of Jones. But they're all keeping together at the baton and Nottingham takes the lead after a clumsy change by Liverpool. Now falling back into third place behind Leeds as they come up for the next change. That was better for Liverpool. Harrison is forging ahead, but Lawrence is keeping up with Nottingham. Uh, Chatterley takes the baton from Lawrence just ahead of Lenton, but these two are neck and neck and going like the wind. And at the tape, it's a photo finish, but I think Liverpool just ahead there. Yes, that's confirmed. And Liverpool have set a new British record of 38.12 seconds. In fact, the first three have all bested the previous record. Four. Lining up for the final heat. On your marks, set. It's Bob Bruce in the lead from Vic Aston and Billy Kramer. What an athlete Bruce is, marvellous runner. And Macbeth's going to take himself into a good lead now for Glasgow, then Birmingham, then Manchester, with Oxford trailing as we come into the bend, and Campbell's off to a bad start. Look at Thompson. He's making a strong challenge, going past them all for Oxford. He's ahead of Glasgow at the change, and Hartley just has to run home. Yes, they can't catch him now. He's over the line with McLeish taking a good runners-up place for Glasgow. A great run from Thompson there. Now listen to the semi-finals. One. There's a tremendous atmosphere here at Wembley as we wait for the first semi-final in the men's 4x100 metre relay. The first runners are getting prepared, and who can predict the result? York are the surprise semi-finalists, and a lot of people are shouting for them. On the other hand, Nottingham must be the logical choice, just beaten by Liverpool in that record-breaking third heat. Then again, Glasgow seemed unlucky in the fourth heat. They're on the blocks. On your marks. Set. It's Clough into an early lead in the white and red for Nottingham with Bruce and Gates fighting for second place. Coming up to the change and Forrest keeps the lead for Nottingham, running beautifully. Then Minster in the all-white strip for York. Macbeth into the second change. And, oh, Campbell's chasing Lawrence of Nottingham. It's anybody's race. York's just behind as they go for the change. But Chatterley has dropped the baton. Chatterley has dropped. York are well ahead and Glasgow run into second place. What a turn up for the book. York are in the final for the first time and Chatterley is on the ground utterly dejected. But uh, over now to the javelin. Two. 
perhaps the second semi-final is a little more predictable. We have four good teams, but Liverpool must be unbeatable. That's Sharp talking to Waters. Both men, of course, in the Olympic team. But that doesn't mean they won't be doing their best to beat each other today. They're getting ready. Oxford in dark blue, Liverpool red, South London white, and Swansea green. We're ready. On your marks. Set. And it's sharp. Hornby in the blue, then Swansea in green with Waters training for South London. They're coming. They're into the change. Beautifully taken for Liverpool by McCartney. And Cole of Oxford fighting Singh for second position. Bryn Jones lagging for Swansea. It's a race for second place, surely now, as Harrison races ahead. He's nearly 20 metres in front now as he comes up to pass the baton to Lenton. Oh, he's well ahead. Maybe this could be a record breaker again. Lenton's across the line. Then Harley for Oxford, just a touch in front of Minder for London. Let's get the time. 38.09 seconds. Liverpool have just beaten their new record. Now listen to the final. Well, after yesterday's semi-final, there can't be much doubt about who's favourite for today's 4 by 100 metre relay. Liverpool are on top form and the less experienced teams from York, Oxford and Glasgow must realise the fight is for the second place. But no race can be a 100% foregone conclusion as we line up for the final. Sharp, as usual, takes the start for Liverpool. Oxford have changed the running order with Thompson opening and Hornby taking the third stage. On your marks. Set. Gates for York, first off the line, but Sharp's with him. Thompson passes Bruce. They run for the changeover, smoothly taken. They're all together, not much to choose between them. McCartney edges to the front, but Cole's going like a steam engine. They're into the second change, and it's got to be Liverpool. Harrison pulls away from Hornby. Riding and Campbell are both close, very close. The third... And Lenton, Lenton is, Lenton is down, he's down, and Oxford fighting to catch York desperately. Lenton's up, but at the line is Oxford. Oxford by a hair's breadth from Roundtree of York. Ghost plane crash. We came alongside and uh, looked into the cockpit, hoping to see or wondering whether we were going to see a crew or a hijack in progress or whatever. And we looked in, and on the first pass, we weren't sure. Uh, John thought that he saw somebody in the front cockpit. Second time we came round, we managed to stabilize uh, with the aeroplane in a close formation position. And uh, we looked in and were able to see that there was nobody sitting at the controls. In many ways, it was uh, a good thing that they were probably dead or unconscious at that time, in that if there'd been somebody in the rear waving at us, I mean, there was nothing we could do uh, to resolve the problem. So it, it made things a bit easier for us, if, if you understand what I mean. Belief, doubt and certainty. Roy Clark is an investigator for an insurance company. He's investigating a fire at a small warehouse. The contents were insured for half a million pounds. He's talking to Dave Grimes, the owner. Look, I can't see what you're here for. I filled out all the forms, right? When do I get my money? It's not quite that simple, Mr Grimes. We have to be absolutely sure of every detail before we pay you. It's all on the form, isn't it? Yes, well, uh, where did the fire start? Well, how should I know? It was three o'clock in the morning. On the form, you've put the reception area down. Well, that's what the fire brigade thought. I've got no idea. But you put it on the form. They said it must have started there. Look, it destroyed half a million quid's worth of stuff. There's some dispute about that figure. I'll have to see invoices and delivery notes for it, I'm afraid. Are you calling me a liar? No, no, I don't doubt your word for a moment, Mr Grimes. Oh, all right, then. I'm sorry, but I'm bound to ask you the next question. And please believe me that I'm not disputing your statement. But is it true that business has been very bad recently? Who said that? That's nonsense. As a matter of fact, there was a newspaper report a few weeks ago. It said that there will be 20 redundancies here. Oh, yeah. Well, we're reorganising. I see. No doubt the newspaper was exaggerating. That's right. It's just that my manager has raised some questions about your business. You must understand that it's hard for us to see to see how you could possibly sell half a million pounds worth of electric coffee stirrers. We just can't believe that anybody would buy them. Are you accusing me of arson? Saying, I set light to the place myself? I didn't say that. It's just uh, slightly suspicious that...